I'd like to call upon Carrie's higher self and our collectives and any other beings that want to be of service for us today. Yes, we are here at this time. Well, thank you very much. I'm just going to pin that. Okay. Well, thank you very much. So uh, we would like to understand a little bit more about the Anunnaki, please. And what is going on for the collective? Are we able to get some representation of the collective to speak with us? Yes, you are speaking to the representative at this moment. Well, thank you very much. Uh, as you may have been aware, we have sent some love and healing to the collective. What would you like us to know about that? That we have received that love and healing and we do appreciate it. Um, that we have taken uh, the collective's love and uh, the information that has been sent to us. And we have taken that information and considered it with our collective as to what we need to do next. Okay, well, thank you um, for letting us know. So what is your current plans as a collective for this planet? Well, our current plans have had to be rerouted and changed. Our current plans are we have been assisted by other collectives that have offered us their planets to continue the experience that we wish to experience. And um, they have given us a peace treaty in the fact that we would not uh, be taking any of the karma with us, that we will uh, be there and given a new opportunity uh, to uh, to basically not commit the same um, mistakes that we have made here in a, abusing our power. And we are going to go there and, um, you know, we would like to continue expanding our, our uh, collective to grow in numbers, but um, from a higher vibration. I see. And so... Can you tell me more about what you had hoped to be able to do uh, on this planet? Um, I understand that you've just said that the, it was, uh, the event has changed or your hopes had changed, but what were you planning to be able to do here? Well, essentially we wanted to just be able to survive and thrive as our collective. Um, we've mentioned before that they are not, we are not uh, many in numbers. And so we had to utilize humanity that was here to be able to gain um, some of the resources that we needed because um, we were not big in numbers ourselves. And we were very fond of humanity and um, the, like the love that they had for one another and the family structures. And we felt like we could create our numbers more by uh, breeding our DNA within humanity. And um, we also, in doing so, increase their numbers to also do the work for us to gain the materials. It was about uh, the materials and resources that we needed to attain a higher frequency. I see. And so... Um... Now that things have changed, do you have clear plans uh, for future events for your collective? We are, um, there are, our collective is mostly evacuated. We're showing Carrie there's only a couple left. And uh, one of the, no, two, two of our collective that were, the main like rulers were entrapped uh, within inner earth and they have been since freed and that we were not going to leave without them. Who was entrapping them in the inner earth? Um, it was an entrapment by... It was like we're showing Carrie, like it was an entrapment by outside. They did not um, exist within 
Gaia. They are outside uh, what you would call extraterrestrials or outside collectives that inhabited other be or planets that followed us here. And they entrapped us so that we could do no more harm um, to humanity. Like we had done harm on their planet to them and they followed us here when we escaped. And then when they found us, they entrapped two of our, uh, our, it was a priest, what we would say, like a priest and priestess, um, that they were entrapped. I see. And how, uh, how recently were they released? Um, what humanity would call in time about two to three months. Oh, and how did they get released? Um, there was a, there were conversations going on within the collectives, um, specifically your collectives and, um, some of the other collectives that, um, are not in this channel right now. And they got together and when they were discovered that they were entrapped there because it was unknown, um, when they were found that love and healing was sent and then there were conversations about if they were going to be released that they couldn't abuse this power because they couldn't interfere with the ascension that Gaia wanted to make during this time. So they were in conversations of, if we let you go, you're not going to do harm. And in like an insurance policy that that would not happen. Oh, fantastic. And so were they wanting to come back and um, take power or rule again if, uh, otherwise? They were not. However, the other collectives did not trust them. Okay, I understand. And so what are they doing now? Um, they have gone back. They have evacuated and gone back to source and they left several of us behind. And we have been here just as ambassadors and um trying to um, have the conversations about where we would go. Um, we did not want to leave this earthly realm, um, but we also know that once Gaia ascends, that there is no choice. And so we'd better actually be a part of those conversations of where we go rather than leave it up to fate of what is uh, supposed to happen to us. I see. So you are getting more support from other collectives now? Yes, because they realize that our intention is that we realize that um, it's basically when you're like playing, like we're showing Carrie a chessboard when you play chess and when you know the like the king, the queen's been captured and you just kind of like toss over your king as like, okay, I surrender. Uh, we realize that uh, we don't have much time and we realize that uh, uh, we want to thrive in a different way than we have here and learn the lessons and uh, we want to go to a planet and give that opportunity. Fantastic. And will you be the sole occupants of that planet or um, what will that planet look like in terms of its occupation, uh, occupants? We are given this planet for us to seed. So it is, uh, we're showing Carrie like a lot, a lot of just barren land um that we are going to be able to work and uh work ourselves and seed the planet and kind of have free reign uh, but there will not be other beings that is the insurance policy is this something that gives you great hope and joy Yes, we hope, um, all, you know, we loved our time here on earth, what we were able to do, but it does give us great hope to be able to grow our numbers so that we can uh, learn from these events, grow through our vibration and our lessons and be able to eventually be allowed to see to other planets, knowing that we, it's almost like atonement to show that we can evolve as a species, as a being, as a collective. Are your hopes to be able to evolve into the fifth dimension then? We hope to. Um, however, since we have mastered the third dimension, 
we are going to a third dimension planet because it will be mostly for us about thriving and, and breeding um, during that time. I see. Thank you. Uh, extraordinary. Well, thank you. And is there any other information you would like us to know about your collective and the history of this planet? We would like everyone to know that although what could be looked at as, you know, good versus evil, that we did love coming here and we did love the be beings and we almost became, um, we almost came mesmerized by uh, the human beings. And um, we at first did not want to cause any harm. It was more or less an infatuation, but you know, the, the dense energies of this planet took over even being highly powerful beings. It did take over our, uh, you know, our energy fields. And so then we did succumb to some of those lower density, um, actions and, uh, thoughts and, uh, what we did to other beings. And we never had the intention coming here for that to happen. It just was like a domino effect. It, one thing led to another, to another, to another. And then before we realized it, it was just out of control. And we did have some that were just very dense beings amongst our own collective. Uh, but that was never our intention. That's never what we wanted for this planet. And um, we are trying our best to heal from this and to learn the lessons and to move on in a better way and better uh, impact for all. Well, thank you so much. I do really appreciate knowing and hearing from you. Um, and we wish you well for your future endeavors and hope that your collective is successful in finding peace and harmony and balance as you uh, deserve to have that experience for your own growth and empowerment, enjoying that new planet. Is it a new planet that's been designed for you or is it one that's just uh, been waiting to be inhabited? It is one that has evolved to be able to hold a 3D um, experience. Fantastic. Okay, well, all the best for that. And uh, thank you for giving us the opportunities to grow and expand and explore uh, what our history of this planet has been. You're very welcome. And um, thank you for the love and the healing. Um, oh, I think everyone deserves it, so you're more than welcome. Um, are we able to um, see how the body is doing? Uh, I am curious to see how um, what's going on for Carrie's body. Um, yes, we're doing a scan, and we have been scanning. Carrie has, uh, since beginning the session, the pressure in her head's gotten more. Um, in the front lobe and then um, she's also having some just a little bit of joint pain and that is just the energy that she's transmuting right now is just um, a little bit stuck um, and so she just needs to help in intentionally releasing it okay well thank you uh, tell me why she has the pressure in her head um, she has the pressure in her head because of the connection she just made was a, a different frequency and a different energy than she's encountered before. And so that was a little bit for her. Also, she is feeling just the pressurization of the energies ramping up uh, for the release of Gaia. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay. Um, well, thank you. Um, and I think she does have that awareness that she can since the pressure uh, of a pre-earthquake. She was thinking maybe she was going to be experiencing a three or something. Yes, yes. She'll be experiencing um, something here soon. And um, she uh, she does have a connection with the uh, earthquakes. Mm -hmm. uh, she, helps, she helps activate them and she can sense when they're coming. Why is that important for her experience here? Um, because it is important because this is a huge area that needs to be released um, for the release of all the souls here that need to ascend. And um, like we're showing Carrie the plate like opening up 
and she is kind of in the middle of uh, the area that she's at that state where she is going to be like she's helping activate that release so that it can release the souls for ascension I see okay well thank you so much she was curious why she was having quite a ferocious appetite at the moment um, because she is actually, it's the dense energy she feels as, uh, as she goes along and she can feel a lot of the anxiety and the, uh, in the surrounding area of her, she has a very big energy field, um, more like she thinks it's only, it could only be as large of a town, but her energy field is a lot bigger than that. It's almost the size of the state. And so she takes that energy and, um, she transmutes it but the denseness is like she's she's getting to a point where she can transmute it very quick and she gets almost very high vibration and then she wants to eat to kind of ground herself or lower herself a little bit so it makes it a little bit more comfortable for her okay well that makes sense um i'm grateful for that information um, it occurred to me that I haven't connected in with Ashtar for a while and I've been hearing some rumors about stuff he's been getting up to uh, from other people who are talking to me about other information they're getting. So is it possible that we can connect in with Ashtar today, please? Yes, this is Ashtar. Um, hello once again. Um, so what have you been up to? Because I'm hearing all sorts of interesting things. So we have been up to uh, preparing for the final ascension and getting all the ships and all the preparations and all of our energy work that we're doing here. We're getting that prepared. Um, we have also been having encounters with uh, on another planet of uh, kind of what you would view as fighting off the last of the resistance of the release of the uh, lower density entities within Gaia right now. Um, they have fled to another planet and we have been um, in somewhat of a battle with them. Why were you needing to engage in the battle? Because they were not wanting, uh, they, the ones that had escaped were the ones that did not want to honor a treaty did not want to honor uh, a, like Carrie's saying, a contract of uh, where they would go after this. And they were wanting to go and take, uh, instead of shifting um, and being on Gaia till the end, they wanted to release from Gaia right now and just go inhabit like a parasite to a new planet. And we said, that's not in the cards. It's not in the deal for you guys. Your guys' contract is to see this out, to learn the lessons and to evolve. It is not to run from the lessons. So with the lessons that they were supposed to experience, those that they will be experiencing on the old earth? Yes. I see. Is to see what the is to see what the destruction of a planet that they actively were a part of the lower density in engaging in that so that they would never repeat it again. And so they were currently on a different planet and you have? Not all. Some, some knew that they needed to fulfill that lesson in that collective and some in that collective is, tried to escape. They tried to weasel their way out of it. And we had permission from the collective, their collective, to actually do this because their collective does not want to have to keep escaping planets. Ah, so it's the naughty kids. <laughs> yes, yes. And it's almost like the the naughty kids in the bunch and, and the elders were like, no, they need to learn this lesson. Our collective is tired of running. And so we were given full assistance um, to perform this and to catch them. Oh, I see. Extraordinary. So it was part of their life contracts to be here, to be able to experience it. And um, that makes sense. Well, that does align with some of the things I've heard um, then. Uh, seems like you are more busier than I can even comprehend. We are, but it's not anything for us, you know, being 
and this realm, this multidimensional realm, it's not, it does seem busy, but uh, it's, you know, that was just like side work for us. It really wasn't the main focus is on the ascension. Um, and this was just another piece to the puzzle. Um, can you give us a, a kind of an understanding of the, the number of beings that you had to, to, to deal with? I'm showing Carrie like three to 4,000. Oh, okay. Oh, that is sizable. And so, um, okay, that's really interesting. And so, um, how was the, how was the experience of old earth going to be now? I mean, I don't know if you're aware of the information that we have collected, uh, that we have in the book manual, whatever you want to call it um for mastering the old earth is that still going to be as significant or have things changed the information is very significant as far as timeline goes we do not see uh old earth sustaining as long as uh it was thought um you know it was i think that it was a couple years that uh was reflected in the passages in the book um, however it'll be shortened um and that is partly due to the extension of the ascension. Um, we've kind of cut into some of that timeline. And uh, we, all the collectives here that are working so hard would like to move on with this once the shift has occurred. And so we don't want to you know, prolong the timeline to uh, longer than needed. So it will be a shorter time for humanity to are, are the beings that stay behind on old earth. Um, we're showing Carrie like nine months to a year. Um, so it's shortened significantly. Um, but as far as what needs to happen um, with the lessons and the unity and the bring, you know, uh, sticking together and then watching and, uh, you know, a planet die, those are all things that still need to occur. Thank you. I understand. And so uh, were you part of uh, finding the, uh, a new planet for the uh, Anunnaki by any chance? We did assist on that, yes. Um, and we did have, we have many treaties going on with many different of the Starseed collectives that are on Earth right now. And we have been working diligently on those for the past um, six months to a year, especially as to uh, all those beings and the treaties of where they'd go. Um, that was part of making sure that they're, you know, learning from this lesson and making sure that we've uh, dotted the I's and crossed the T's, if you will, so that this never happens again. Mm, yeah, absolutely. Um, it seems like all of the experiences will be experienced and I'm sure the significance will not be gone unnoticed correct well that's successful and i can understand that um and then what are your plans after uh the shift and uh, this earth no longer needs babysitting so we will help with the transport of all of the beings where they need to go we will assist to make sure they are protected and there are other planets that need our assistance and our resources and our uh, support that we will then take uh, the ones that are still feel like they are rejuvenated in a way and don't need to re-energize. We'll take those fleets to those uh, planets and help assist. And some of the fleets will go back to their original planets for rejuvenization. I see. And so what's, what is a kind of common um state of other planets that you could be assisting what's going on for them there's different types of uh densities density ranges of emotions ranges of energies and uh it's all kind of like cause and effect it it, it all kind of starts off with the same um, ability to access those range of uh, densities and uh, it's just different choices cause different civil wars cause different harms to themselves um, you know there is there are other planets that are 3d planets that are not free will that really need our help too 
um, because assisting them in the pathway that they need to um, learn the lessons. Mm, that is extraordinary. So how does it work when they don't have free will? What does a planet that has no free will look like? Um, they are more or less have to work like a colony, a hive. They have to, they have to work with one another in a symbiosis and they get direct orders from a hierarchy. What are the life lessons and purposes of living in one of those planets? Some of the life lessons and purposes are to prevent like what happened here on planet earth is uh, when you do get the option to be in a space of free will or coexistence to there is a way to live in symbiosis that does not invade on another person, human, human being or another being's free will and how to live more in harmony. Oh, I see. Would that be sort of like a stepping stone, uh, starter level entry 3D planet situation for those who are wanting to uh, start experiencing physical lives? Um, some do go there as a starting point um, because we've shown what happens when you don't have that submissive understanding of uh, before you are given the opportunity of freedom. It's just like we use the analogy like uh, raising a child. Uh, you start off giving them rules and teachings and really guiding every movement that they make until you start taking those training wheels off until they can find their balance in life and they can learn their own lessons and have responsibility in that. Now, if you just came into this earth and weren't guided through something like that and were just given free reign, well, that's what's kind of happened to some of the um, extent of the beings that took inhabitant on uh, Gaia is that they just ran with it and they were very feral in a lot of ways. And so what happens is to put it as a starting off by going to a, a non-free will planet is you are just like the child learning how to have boundaries and, and then being grateful for the freedom once you are given it um, in order to honor and respect it. At least that was our hope here on earth. Oh, I see. So, um, so how, how well did that go then? <laughs> um, knowing the history now of this planet. Right. So as you're correct, that we would, that's why we have like, it is a great idea to start off in a non-free will planet, um, to just learn about densities, um, but to not have like, to be also in somewhat of a box and protected from yourself and from others. So, and how well that's going? Well, we're evacuating you guys during this time. So <laughs> we've learned our lesson too. Uh, yes, indeed. As some people refer to this planet as a masterclass in the 3D, what would you like us to know about that? What is your opinion? Oh, yes, we very much so respect and admire the ones that have come down here. And it is a masterclass because it has a wide, the most wide variety of emotions and abilities uh, to uh, experience those lower density emotions, feelings, vibrations, whatever you would like to call them. And to come here and to be able to um, ascend the ladder um, through those, um, although we understand that um, the beings have been entrapped here, um, not of their free will, uh, but as a side door, but understanding that there still are a lot that have mastered so many skills within this, uh, all these densities on earth realm. And um, this is basically, you have, you have evolved so high that you wanted to take away your remembrance of how powerful you were and come into this uh, low density earth and be able to then basically take the hardest test you could take and ascend the, the ladder. And so it is very admirable and uh, there is much respect to all who have chosen to come here during this time and um, for all eternity. Oh, that's very interesting. Thank you very much for um, giving us that perspective. 
um, in terms of something super, super, super superficial now, um, Ashta, tell me about your body. I know that many people have had conversations about what you look like and there is much debate on what does an, a Palladian truly look like. So what do you have to say? So I take the form of a Pleiadian that looks a lot like uh, humanity. I look more um, like Carrie is equating it to like a, a, not a Viking in a bohemic, well, not in the Viking in like a, a rough way, but in my body size and structure. Um, I am a, if you will, I am a, like my, energy in my body is not a denseness though it is like a holographic uh body and so what i take form in does not take as much energy because it is just like a hologram of a body um that my energy is stored within so i can take the body form or i can be of energy um resonance okay and um so when you present yourself to people or others, is it the same consistent um, human-like form? Not always. Um, we present ourselves to humans um, the way they need to see us to understand that it's the energy of my frequency. Okay, interesting. Well, that is cool. Um, and so... Uh, there was a conversation about uh, the skin color of uh, the Palladians and there was a very hot topic about it. What would you like us to understand um, from your perspective? That just like any evolved species within different realms that are, are depending on where our star seeds are inhabiting and what they need for that experience, whether they inhabit a, a planet that needs physical structure or crystalline stru uh, structure or energy structure, that our energy, the way we present ourselves and what we need to take physical form will differ for the evolution of what we need for that planet. And so there is a wide ver like range of uh, body types that we can take depending on which part of our star seeds are inhabiting that planet. Oh, that does sound very helpful to be able to do that. So I understand that. Thank you. Um, and then of course we uh, also see the debates of your uniforms that you wear. What would you like us to know about the uniforms you supposedly wear when you expose yourself to humans? Once again, we'll we'll wear whatever we feel is appropriate to present ourselves with. And anyone who at this time, while you're about to evacuate a planet, is more focused on what we're wearing is needs to really question the 3D density of what they've they're really attuning to. This is not a fashion show on Earth, and this is not a social media platform where we have to like talk about each other and what we're wearing it is more important for humanity to discuss right now what they are doing to release these emotions. Well, yes, but you also know that humanity loves to distract itself. Well, then my answer is take the form, whatever you need to see. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. Well, I'm imagining lots of things. So wonderful. And um, thank you so much. Um, I really appreciate everything that you're doing for humanity and we honor uh, the service that you constantly provide for us and all and we do appreciate you and I know that many who have been distracted uh, from focusing on the bigger picture will, will either quickly gain um, insight and motivation to quickly do their inner work or they will find out later when they are physically on a ship understanding that they have been relocated from a dying planet yes it is my pleasure to connect during this time thank you so much is there a final message that you would like the palladians to hear our our collective and i would like to respond with the seriousness of what is going on during these times and for the Pleiadian collectives, the star seeds on earth that are listening at this moment, 
we are asking you to stand in your power, stand in your truth, um, to really understand that you're very important and needed during this time and that you agreed to come during this time to perform these roles. And there is an expectation that you are going to hear this, hear this message and want to respond with nothing but servitude for others, servitude for self, servitude for Gaia and servitude most of all for our collective um, because it does, it is important and um, it is needed that all of our star seeds really um, step into their power and release any of those nonsense things that they're focusing on and really focus back on that you are ascending to a, a new dimension, a new place, and you are assisting humanity who needs you most of all. Um, and that's why you came here during this time. So uh, we just want it to be taken seriously and to not, uh, this is not entertainment factor right now. This is not to just uh, what you would call shits and giggles. This is important, what we need for all during this time. And we know that you guys are strong. Um, you cho We chose you and you stood up to come during this time because you had what it took. And so we have nothing but utmost faith and um, desire and just, we need you during this time. Are we able to use our free will to be able to ask and inspire and spark all of those Palladians who are still uh, unawoken to the bigger truths to find this information and to be able to recognize and remember who they are what else can we do to help them today yes we are sending that transmission right now and uh we will help support all that you are doing during this time um on the different platforms that you attend to we will help in any way that we can to um give you the words that will resonate with our collective great well, I know that they'll really appreciate this information as this is an opportunity for them to step into their empowerment to be able to be of purpose. Yes, it is our pleasure. And thank you for giving this platform for us to have communication during this time. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, you can recede to your busy life uh, in your garment of your choosing. Um, and we send you so much love and appreciation um, while we try to keep ourselves balanced and neutral. So I would like to talk to Carrie subconscious, please. Yes, this is them. Fantastic. Um, tell me about your bodies just to give us this answer so we can help people get over the small details so they can accept the bigger stuff. So our bodies are like, we're, we're very, we're showing Carrie, we're smaller in stature. Um, we do have different ranges of height that we can do, but our bar body is um, smaller and we almost look like, um, we would almost look like what you would say, like the grays look like, but very, very tiny, um, about two feet tall. And we have a prominent, like a prominent, like third eye. Um, we have very deep black eyes and we have a very prominent where you could see it on the outside of our skeleton, the third eye. And we are very linky. And uh, what else would you like to know about our bodies? Um, just anything you want to share with us because uh, we have heard um, uh, that the Archangels are connected to the Ecturians. Is that still correct? Yes, but like any evolution of any collective, it de would depend on what part of that collective that you're talking about. If you think that, if you understand that when collective seed, you know, we're showing Carrie just like so many planets in the sky. She wants to say billions or trillions of planets that when we send our collectives to seed those planets, that those bodies do take the form that they need to, to thrive on those planets. And so as you're talking to us right now, that the ones that are assisting Carrie during this time, that is the body form that we take. 
um, we are attached to um, the Octurians are a part of the archangels. However, some of the archangels do take some of the other collectives energy resonance um, and they're not pure Octurian. However, the predominant number of the archangels are Octurian. Mm. Um, there was a question about um, people feeling that they had detached wings and that they were feeling this, um, the, this, the uh, shoulder blades were feeling raw um, and they had been told that this was part of their wings growing back or that their wings had been detached. What can you explain to us about what's going on there, please? Well, they could be a, they could be vibrating and uh, attaching to a previous lifetime or a future lifetime that they are connecting with, and so the energy could be connecting with that body. However, they're not growing the bodies in that sense on the earth. It's just you're attaching to a memory, if you will, and it's. It's like almost like phantom pains when you cut off a limb, how the limb can still feel that attachment to that energy. So when they are feeling these things, they are just connecting with a different timeline that they once took a, a form in and they're just connecting with that. Mm, I understand. So um, the concept of archangels having wings, what would you like us to just grasp? That that is a man-made construct of uh, what they present themselves on Earth, um, and so when archangels do present themselves that way, it is because they just um, when archangels present themselves on Earth, it is not a physical form; it is an imprint or a holograph within um, that person who is seeing them within their mind. And so since it has been correlated over time that the angels have had wings, that's the imprint of the correlation that they give them. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, that makes sense. Um, and I also had another query, um, please, about uh, the consciousness of this planet. Um, I was told by someone that her name is not Gaia. It's in fact Tara. And that Gaia is the 12th dimension of, uh, I guess, potentially her higher self. Um, what would you like us to understand about that? There is a several languages have Gaia can be referred to in several things in several languages. It can translate into different things. And that is where you get the word terrestrials is from the Tara. Um, whether they're extraterrestrials or, uh, you know, terrestrials within this galaxy or within this planet. Um, she, as far as the 12th dimension, we don't show anything to carry regarding that connection. Um, okay, so she, we are showing to carry. The, the Tara is the name of, yes, her higher self, <coughs> excuse me, her higher self. Um, and that is, that is, but she is, she, but it is both her. She is existing in both those places at the same time. If that makes sense. It does. We understand that we are multidimensional beings. And so it's no surprise that this planet is, um, well, her consciousness, I should say. So, is the name of your higher self Gaia or Tara or something else? Gaia is the soul that inhabits the earth. Tara is the higher self. However, they are so well connected that you could interchange the two and you would be right both times. Oh, because someone was pretty convinced uh, what they were saying was true, which is fine but i was wondering then why were we connecting when we were asking for gaia that we were getting the consciousness of the planet yes it, gaia is the consciousness of the planet right okay and in terms of her fifth dimensional consciousness experience um is it still important for her name to be not revealed until we are there 
Yes, and you will not understand it as a name. It will be a, like we're showing Carrie, it will be a noise or a frequency. Oh, well, fantastic. And for those people who are saying that her name is something that we can hear as a sound or a name, what would you like us to know about those? It is, it's not the same type of communication on that planet. Um, you guys are so used to speaking with words and that will be something that will be um, connected with that first to allow you that comfort. However, that is not how you will communicate. So everything will be uh, energy frequency um, vibration on that earth. And so it will be more of a noise than a name. Mm. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Um, definitely appreciate uh, all of that. Uh, so would the Aturians like to give us a message for humanity for today, please? Yes, um, we've been here and supporting these transmissions during these times. And uh, we agree with the Pleiadians, with our collectives and us working together is we would like our uh, collectives to uh, release as much as they can right now and to their, we would like them to redirect their focus as if this was the most important thing in their life. Um, and although having balance and all is understood that that is needed, but the urgency and the, uh, the information which you all hold as is so important to unlock and to ease this transition and to support us um, while supporting you during this time. So we just really ask our collective to um, step into their power and to honor the contract that they came here to fulfill. Uh, so can we call upon all of the collectives that are supporting the Ecturians uh, who are here on this planet right now, those star seeds? May they feel the higher frequency vibration as a upliftment for them to release any fear and worry and doubt and for them to empower and remember strongly who they are and the purpose that they have here, focusing less on their 3D but more on their inner work and their emotions and connecting with others. Yes, and we will assist that transmission and we will make it powerful. Is there anything else we can do to help? <coughs> excuse me not during this time okay well thank you very much i feel like the information has been uh, extraordinary once again and um, i appreciate all that uh, you have been able to do to help us with these connections to be able to understand things from the bigger perspective to be able to remove fear <coughs> yes what is she releasing with those coughs she <coughs> the energy that <coughs> she, <coughs> she was just holding that was a lot of energy for her. Oh. And so she was holding it in her chest um, because uh, that was a lot of energy connecting with um, Gaia Ashtar. Um, and so she's releasing it right now. Oh, fantastic. Okay, thank you. Um, yes, she's doing a great job. And um, thank you for supporting her uh, with this uh, information. So uh, with that, we'll say farewell.